Hello everyone and welcome to another video here today. We are actually going to be covering Irem. We have Amir with us today. How are you doing today, Amir? I am doing amazing. Getting to watch probably one of my um, maybe least favorite characters just due to the fact of Irem meowing every time she's walking beside me. Um, but other than that, uh, the character is very fun to, to watch, very fun to play. She's extremely mobile with a lot of utility in her kit. It's a very fun character to watch. No, certainly. Well, I have to disagree, though. I think that the constant meowing is the best thing <laughs> about Irem. So, I mean, surely you love Irem for this and not hate her for that. But, uh, um, yeah. Yeah, we can uh, we agree to disagree on Irem's, uh, some of Irem's benefits from being on the team. <laughs> Although I will say one of the things that's going to be really interesting about this game for sure is this is yet another character that is strongly utilizing Eye of Horus, one of the new items that got came came in a couple patches ago and has been kind of skyrocketing a lot of characters. So I'm really excited to see how Irem's going to be playing through it with uh, with that kind of item. Yeah, Horus kind of came out of nowhere. Um, I think it was our mid season update um, that brought us the five new items. And uh, Horus has definitely been the like one of the favorite out of the uh, out of all of the items. For sure, I think it's absolutely shaking up the meta, especially in NA. I think we'll be seeing a pretty big meta shift. But for those that don't know Irem or don't understand exactly how Irem kits work, let's just go over the basics here so you guys can kind of understand. So she has a passive known as Catitude. So when Irem enters a different area, her vision range is actually increased, and after staying in the same area. For 15 seconds, instead of her vision range being increased, her other abilities are enhanced. So while she's in iron form, she'll gain increased attack speed. And while she's in cat form, she'll gain increased defense. Before I go over her, her core abilities, I will talk about her ultimate first. So her ultimate pet me allows her to change between cat form and iron form. So when she's in cat form, uh, so she changes from iron into cat. Uh, if there's a fish mark created in a bouncy ball from love or jump, actually, sorry, apologies, guys. I mean, I'm jumping ahead of myself here. <laughs> uh, this this character can seem way more complicated. Let me simplify this. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second. I'm reading this way too much. We need to get this cleared up. So ultimate switches between cat and Irem. Let's go back over her basic abilities. So her first ability, bouncy ball. This is her Q. She throws a bouncy ball, which becomes stronger after each bounce. And when the ball hits an enemy, it stops bouncing and leaves a fish mark. If she's in cat form, what it does is it makes it, makes her next basic attack leap at her target. And if you, uh, and if you attack a target with a cat bell mark, the enemy is rooted. Afterwards, she ends up doing a frontal cone, dealing damage. And if people are CC'd, she'll deal additional damage. For her second skill, Let's Be Friends, Iron creates a small field that slows enemies, and enemies hit by the damage are charmed. And if she's in cat form, she spins in the air, knocking enemies up, and damaging them with a skill reduces the cooldown of her other abilities, such as Love Jump and Perfect Pounce. Her third ability, E, Love Jump, Iron quickly moves towards a certain direction and leaves a fish mark at her original spot. And if she's in cat form, she leaps, dealing damage to enemies within range. Uh, leaping towards a fish mark increases the distance so she can jump actually further. Uh, and lastly, back talking about her ultimate, now that we finally understand the rest of her kit. Because again, Iron, Iron has a lot in her kit because she can switch between these forms. But basically, uh, when she changes into cat, in, increase her next basic attack has increased range and deals bonus damage and then and when she goes from cat to irem she um moving on top of a fish mark grants her a shield yeah oh. irem is a character with a, a lot in her kit technically having seven abilities but when you uh when you get a few games in on her get those uh get those reps in you kind of get to this um this pattern and rhythm that you follow and uh, it becomes a lot simpler of a character yeah exactly i mean like i'm trying to read this to give you guys a simplification of the character and i feel like i just made this character sound way more complicated <laughs> than she actually is but there's just a lot to say about it but in reality like mentioned yeah it's like once you once you have that pattern down it's so much more straightforward 
We can even really see it right now. There's already been a couple brawls while I've been yapping, so you can already kind of see the 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 pattern co coming into play for from her. Yeah, as uh, I know, what a lot of items will do is they open up with that Q, as it is your longest ranged ability um, in uh, in human form or in iron form, uh, where you just bounce that ball. Hopefully, it lands. You get a bit of poke in, and get those fish on the floor. That way you can enter into cat form and then step over those fish, get that shield, and hopefully also find a way to uh, to land a bit of extra damage when you're engaging. No, for sure. Especially like when you uh, when you're using that cat like frontal cone, you know, from her Q the secondary is like your main damage source. Especially if someone's CC'd. The most important thing too is is that most times when you think about her kit, it's trying to set up that root so that when she jumps in. Uh, so basically hitting a target with a cat bell mark would cause the root, but you can actually work off of any CC. If your teammates CC them, you do the additional damage on that Q. Yeah, a nice combo is blocking Irem with characters like Kenneth, where Kenneth has small, he has very short CC, but he has access to a lot of it um, with his Q. You just keep going in, Kenneth Q, Irem Q, kind of line those up. And it's hard to coordinate, but it's uh, it's very strong. My favorite is always just locking in Alonzo with Irem because Alonzo CCs someone for 10 years and we actually have a lot of fight going on up here. I don't know why everyone just wants to take over this uh, fire station zone. Yeah, I noticed but... that too. There's just a lot of people here, but I mean, we're going to be, I mean, it looks like it's, everyone's getting ready for this BZ as we're just going to kind of like clean up some fights and look for, look for some angles here on the Irem. Yeah, sadly, I do oh, we actually do find something. That was a lot of damage coming out from Strider and our cat form Q. Uh, and then just simple, look for the knockup, look for the Q right after. They're CC'd. You're getting that bonus damage. And yeah, now that we were out of abilities for a bit, go into human form and using all of the mobility. Irem has two separate dashes, one in human, one in cat. But you can just see she hits the charm, instantly goes into cat form and looks for the Q because now they're CC'd. And so much damage coming out of that. We're always hitting that DC and then hitting that Q right after. Or we're putting a uh, sorry a cat bell on them and then hitting that Q after. We just try and make sure that we're abusing as much bonus damage from this Q as we can. And I think we're going to be getting a four score out of that. Uh, yeah, uh, let me double check persona. here. Yeah, we got Persona and we also have our Eye of Horse. And yeah, I mean, this is really good use of that mobility. Dodged multiple skills while playing it. And also that's the thing too. Is that because Irem can shift between the two forms, she can play melee, she can play ranged. So like as soon as that last fight ended, she switched into range, played that neutral a little bit, waited for the angle, and then immediately went back into cat and like completely clean sweep the team as soon as she had room to breathe. Yeah, I feel like when I'm watching a good Irem player, they are never doing nothing. They always have something to do because one of their forms will have abilities up, and we're seeing it here where our Iron will use all of their abilities in cat form, switch over to human form, maybe go for a dash out, try and hit a few more abilities to set up their cat form again. And if they miss their human form abilities, then uh, they switch back over to cat and then try and set themselves up in that. Exactly. And it looks like we just got a meteor as well, given to the Aya, not taking it. I mean, again, I think this character is already basically full statted. I think one thing that's really important to know about Iram is that Iram is not really item hungry. At least from my experience, she doesn't seem like she needs a whole lot of items to fully function. And so probably just the Eye of Horus already looking pretty well on this character, I think. Yeah, Iram doesn't need too many things. Um, I find that if you get that Persona online or if you're going Holy Orders, it's very nice. Just this big boost of damage, but that's for most mages um, getting this extra amp off is uh very beneficial to everything that you're going to do for the rest of the game also i don't know if they realize someone's tp'ing right behind them yeah they noticed um, a little late i coming in but yeah it looks like our aya is just going to uh press old press w and sadly the other iron will be on the floor now that is really unlucky i'm <laughs> i'm sure they're wondering why the heck was this team in pawn in the back zone where there is nothing left but unlucky tp trying to get that fire station buyback most likely yeah but um i know recently 
Irem has been seeing a lot more play uh, because Dryder has somehow avoided a few too many nerfs um, and we got Horus in the game recently. So Irem has this really nice combo of her E giving her an empowered auto, her Strider empowering that auto to do even more damage with a slow, um, and Horus coming in for even more damage on that auto attack. Some Irems are going Strider 3 into Horus into any item, and then you just walk up, E, Strider, auto attack. And for some characters, that can just remove nearly half of their health. Exactly. Yeah, I think it's that it's that combination of everything coming together. These characters that can that can enhance the autos that they weave into their kit naturally already just make Horus really good. And then Strider for mobility characters that can that can make their own mobility that don't need that extra tool can utilize this damage. Like Strider, I feel like is just so absurd for the fact that it's 15 seconds, which is shorter than some player characters like um, abilities. Like some abilities are longer cooldown than than this button alone which makes it its own ability in your kit that you basically have just an extra ability in your kit that deals solid damage. Uh, let me just check here. It's, yeah, 405 damage plus the slow on top of it, which is just kind of absurd to me. Yeah, I find that... Uh, personally, I want this, uh, this tactical skill nerfed nearly to the ground, maybe even removed, but I know other players feel like it's a necessity for some of their characters. Um, so it's, I think it's just a personal hatred for me, but we will be seeing something come up here. Or, yeah, we're pulling off the combo of E, Strider, Auto Attack. Removes like 300, 400 health from the Estelle, but the amount of damage coming over to the, uh, to the Sylvia, sorry, as, uh, I think they were CC'd as we throw the Q. I, like, noticing all of these fights, every time they throw this Q, they're trying to set it up with CC before, and I feel like that is one of the big things between or one of the big differences between someone that understands irem and someone that's just playing irem because you have a lot of cc in your kit you just have to know how to combo it when you can where you can be throwing these abilities to help out for sure i think actually another thing that's really important to kind of bring up about, 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 uh, <laughs> bring up about that last fight specifically is that irem didn't immediately do full combo on Estelle. They recognized the Sylvia, they recognized the Zaheer, knew that Estelle was the tank, still did all of their human form damage and you know put pressure onto Estelle. But the second that Sylvia tried to go and engage to like help Estelle, that's when Irem switched gears and full comboed and basically blew up Sylvia instantly. Yeah, still having those abilities up to help out with, uh, oh, uh, anyone else, as we are going to see a lot of damage come out over to the Bianca. I'm not sure from who, I assume from our Dema or Aya, but yeah, the rest of this fight, oh my, the amount of damage we're able to do. W into Q, make sure they're knocked up at CC, and then we get to hit them with a Q. A lot of damage coming out, we auto attack after switching into human form, getting that empowered auto, going for the charm into Q again. It's just, we make sure we have something, it's root <laughs> now. It's like, there's never going to be a time where we're using this Q where they're not CC'd previously, or we don't have a bell on them. It's just one of the most important things to do when we're looking for damage on this character. Just CC, get that bonus damage so that we can hit that Q. Mm -hmm, exactly, and plus also just the patience. The patience on this player, exactly knowing that they can play back, again, waiting, letting everyone else have all this focus, and then cleaning up that fight, played it so well. And even technically 2v1 at the end there, as as they had full health against the Fiora, took down their, their primary targets and was able to clean, clean sweep. Yeah, it did show at the beginning though, <clears throat> as uh, the Bianca was engaging, one of Irem's sadly, uh, one of her downfalls is that she doesn't have too many tools to deny people the engage other than that. Wait, we, we left w. the tree, we left the tree. Oh, um, I guess. <laughs> okay well. we're just too fed we we don't need it um uh you know it could help maybe <laughs> upgrade our uh i think it's our demos arm piece can upgrade with it oh no i think it's meteorite um but yeah who needs it a lot of damage coming over to the daniel which is oh it's surprising but we have a few more fish on the floor i wouldn't be surprised yeah if we switch over to that cat form get that shield and now we're just playing this human form we don't have to worry too much 
just playing the poke game and we see our opportunity go forward strider um sadly you can't get anything off of it though but now we're looking at the daniel and a lot of the time we see these fish on the floor this time our item instead of using our e onto the daniel used it back onto the fish so that if daniel does try and full combo us maybe he still has a few more abilities up after i think he went on aya and put her on the floor um but if he has anything else up then we're still able to get this like 400 500 damage shield it's a uh, a lot of shielding coming out and uh it would have protected us from anything daniel would have done no exactly and i think it's really important to the to know that like you know utilizing those shields getting that extra health knowing where you can handle the damage it's it's kind of wild though to watch this iron because you would think like a lot of times you would watch someone that's probably less experienced on iram they're kind of panicking they're kind of full sending hoping to get like a kill like i wouldn't be surprised to see most irams try and panic jump onto the eva in that last fight and die for it and try to make the trade but not this iram this iram plays it slow patient waiting out that distance and damage coming in from the eva and taking the opportunity when they can to actually go in as soon as they knew that the eva had no more resources or tools left that's when they decided to jump back in and try and put pressure yeah because I assume that as Irem, it must feel so bad to use both your dashes and your strider and then still not get on your target. Because then you don't really have too much else to do. You can kind of throw some uh, bouncing balls around, but you're not really in range to get off any of your cat form abilities and your uh, human form abilities won't be doing too much. So, you know, just making sure you're in range to start setting yourself up. I think that's probably one of the biggest things for solo queue, where Irem has the tools to just play for herself, make sure that she's got everything going, and uh, he just knows all of uh, all of his engage ranges, all the tools that he can use for himself as well. No, exactly. And I mean, that, I think that's one of the reasons why we want to kind of highlight a player like this, because it, it really puts a whole new perspective on how to play the cat. And it's, yeah, I think, it's uh, enjoyable to watch, honestly. <laughs> previously, I kind of just thought, you know, you press your buttons, eventually stuff work. And uh, watching uh, watching this Irem player, it really makes me think that Irem is a lot more of a methodical character. Um, you do have to kind of think through a lot of the buttons that you press. You can't just press Q into, into W and then switch forms and then press E for fun and... You know, I have to think about when I'm using my CC, when I'm using my cat form Q. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that's really, really important to understand. I think, I think the fact that she has this extra range form that she can play from a distance is really, really important. And then knowing your damage tools to be able to make that engage to full commit the play to take down a target when you think that the opportunity is right. Oh, also speaking of, uh, of, uh, CC and Irem Q as I was earlier. Uh, I forgot about a character that works extremely well with uh, with Irem. And it's not for the fact of CC, but this character also brings it. But uh, Shukai has a very nice time with Irem. As obviously he has the knockup, but Shukai also brings uh, better food to the team. And Irem's passive, completely forgot about this, has a uh, a little thing attached to it where she actually gets bonus healing from fish. Um, mm -hmm. Where a percentage of the a percentage of the food will actually just be healed instantly. So if you're getting better food, better fish food specifically, um, then you will be benefiting from the food a lot more. So Shukai and Irem have a very nice time together no absolutely yeah yeah that's the that's the last little bit of her passive where if she if she ends up eating fish food yeah she gets 10 percent of her of it instantly healed so yeah with the jukai for sure having like the specialty cat food made by him can definitely help out a ton yeah because i did see the uh sweet potatoes dropped earlier and i was thinking what if we uh fished real quick for a bit of uh, a bit of cod or Forget, is it salmon is the uh yeah 
Oh yeah, it's the rare fish. Look um, at the but... damage coming in from the Evo though, oh, my gosh. Yeah, that Ava is a character that is very scary. Hitting you with that W D buff, E into R. Um, but also we won't see a lot of damage coming over to our arm. I'm actually being put on the floor. That is one of the fights where I think we walked too far up, didn't actually understand that this Daniel has the ability to do stuff, but it doesn't matter. We were able to play a bit of a tank and our team was able to clean up. Yeah, I think we went a little... I think The thing is, though, is that we tried to take out the Eva with our range combo. As we saw, like, Eva left that fight with almost no HP. But we weren't able to go in fully after our Aya took the brunt force of it. And ended up becoming the primary target. But luckily, their teammates were able to clean up the last fight. But even still, I think this Iram showed us a lot of ways to be able to carry on this character. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one.